this probably isn't going to be what you're thinking. And I'm probably going to say some stuff that's going to get me canceled. What's up, everybody? Tyra Rivera here, the absolute best LGBTQ comedian in the world before we get started please make sure you like this video comment at some point and also subscribe if anybody's interested puppy bijou is currently enjoying a whimsy's alligator whimsy's alligator is never to be sponsor of unbothered by tyra vera but we still give them the shout out if you guys need anything from amazon or you want to check out whimsy's treats please check the link below okay so some people that were on my youtube were asking me to do a review of the one man show nate which is part of the netflix is a joke series which is their comedy series i said i would do it the last time i did one of these that was on something like this it was for nanette which i absolutely hated nanette and so did a lot of people even though the industry tried to convince us that the entire world was obsessed with nanette nobody liked nanette in real life in the industry people were going crazy for it but uh, there's a reason comedy central is taking a shit the industry does not have its pulse on what it is people are thinking about but that is neither here nor there we are here to talk about nate for anybody that's not familiar natalie palamides apparently is a comedian i haven't met her yet i'm not saying that means anything there's millions of comedians that i've never heard of and never met i'm just the absolute best lgbtq comedian in the world but that doesn't mean that i know every other comedian <sighs> where to start on nate okay nate what i liked about nate is at the beginning at least netflix says if you watch it that it is a one-man show like i said a couple of people have asked me to review it one person said that it was intriguing at the beginning and then by the end they just felt like everything was fucked and then another person just said they were curious to see what I thought about it. Then I also heard Tim Dillon talk about it on his podcast, for, but just a little bit and how it addresses toxic masculinity and how he felt about that. So if you guys get a chance, check out the Tim Dillon show. I'll probably put a link for it right here so you guys can check out that episode and hear him talk about it. Tim Dillon is an absolute genius, and I'm not saying this to suck his dick. I'm saying it because... Whatever his point of view is on a lot of things, he knows how to make you click and actually watch or tune into Netflix, which is exactly what I did. Because first, people had mentioned it to me on my YouTube and on Instagram, and then Tim Dillon mentioned it, and I was like, okay, well, I guess I have to check it out. Yes, it does address toxic masculinity, which I'm still not sure exactly what toxic masculinity is. I know a bit of it is the boys don't cry, and also boys should always be trying to get laid. I know that's part of it. Sexual harassment is also part of it. I'm not 100% sure on toxic masculinity. I'll try to find a definition for it, but I'm not the expert on that. I'm a man who dates men, and... For us, it is what it is. So here's the deal. At first, because I was prepared to hate it, I was decorating my tree as I was halfway watching, halfway paying attention. And it was to me at first just like, uh, this is just some feminist bullshit. And I know that this is going to be boring. And so I had that attitude while it was playing in the background. There were points where I thought about turning it off because it was just getting on my nerves because Natalie Palomides plays a character by the name of Nate in this one man show. She is Nate. And so Nate is this exaggerated version of a man being played by Natalie Palomides. She goes through, well, he as Nate goes through consent and there's a point where he asks different audience members if he can touch their boobs. At one point, he asks a guy if he can grab his dick. He also turns one audience member into his best friend and then uh, takes another audience member and has that audience member basically play his ex-girlfriend. It Like, that part is whatever. It's what it is. It's all leading up to... Nate eventually, after telling us about consent and everything else, goes out on a date with his art teacher, Miss Jackson, who is also played by Nate. And they end up in a situation where they go watch the show, Nate, which is supposed to be basically them watching that show, which is, I guess, what they call meta, whatever with that. 
Anyway, like I said, there were several points where I thought about turning it off. There were several points where I was just over it. And I know that no matter what I say, some people are going to get mad at me. If you guys remember, I mentioned my doing a review of Nanette. A lot of people in the comments were mad at me. It got a lot of dislikes, but it also got a lot of people to watch. So uh, this is not meant to be any kind of clickbait. It really is. The best way I can put it is I let it play through the end. And by the end, I was pleasantly surprised because what Nate actually ends up addressing is the slippery slope that you can end up in with consent, especially when people are drinking. Because I know this is going to be a bit of a spoiler, but I really feel like even after I tell you about it, you should definitely watch it and let me know what your opinion is on it. Because to me, it was actually kind of a positive message because you always hear about a guy and a girl go drinking and then they end up having sex and now the guy is a rapist. And Natalie Palomides actually addresses the fact through Nate that sometimes that isn't the intention of the guy at all. And he actually does ask before he and Miss Jackson end up having sex if he has consent. She says yes. She ends up passing out halfway through. He stops, has his best friend, the person that he had selected earlier from the audience, come and get her or help him get her and take her back to her place, which is behind the stage and kind of cute and kind of funny. And I was so impressed by the way that she actually addressed that, that I ended up deciding that I needed to watch it again, give it my full attention when I wasn't decorating the tree. So I watched it a second time and I have to admit, after knowing that it wasn't going to be a setup and just an indictment on men in general and toxic masculinity, that it's actually really funny and it's good. It's good to make you think for me, Nate, even if it's not traditional comedy, because it's definitely not, it creates a conversation and it definitely is art, in my opinion. And I like that that gets addressed because even I, as a gay man, have been in some situations where I was like, I don't really know how that went down or if that technically was okay. When I was much younger, there was one time that I think about all the time. I went out on a date with this doctor. Well, actually he owns an entire medical building and he's a doctor. And I went on a date with him and we ended up getting really drunk. I ended up blacking out. And when I woke up, I didn't know what had happened exactly, but I knew that a lot had happened. There just was a lot of evidence around me. I won't go into graphic detail, but there was just a lot of evidence around me that a lot of sexual activity had happened the night before. Like I said, I was completely 100% blacked out. He had 100% blacked out, according to him. I don't know how he drove me back or what happened. There's a cynical part of me that thinks that he may have drugged me, but I don't have any proof of that. And I just chalked it up to just something that happened. But within the context, when I don't know what happened and he says he doesn't know what happened, then it really turns into a situation where it's like, okay, well, then who would have violated who? And at that point, I just took it as a weird situation and kept it moving. And I think a lot of us, if we're being honest and we're actual or were at a point drinkers, partiers, then we've had situations like that where it's kind of like you don't know exactly how that went down and you don't know if it was right or wrong. Mine happened when I was much younger, like I said. So it was years before anybody was talking about this kind of stuff or making any kind of deal about this kind of stuff. But I do think it deserves talking about. I do think it deserves to be explored. And I did like that when I looked at it the second time, when I actually watched it with full attention, I wasn't so hard on Natalie Palomides overly exaggerated portrayal of a man because if you pay attention to it, her portrayal of Miss Jackson, who's obviously the woman that she's playing, was also very exaggerated. So in that way, it made it completely forgivable to me because I felt almost like 
it was when you do stage makeup. Like if you do makeup for the stage, you obviously have to put on a lot more because people have to see it from far away. And that's how I felt about her reasoning for exaggerating. And I could be completely wrong. I don't know her. I haven't spoken with her. I haven't seen any interviews with her. But I felt like this exaggeration was necessary to make the point that she was making. There's a way that men are told that they're supposed to act and behave. And so Nate is trying to live up to that. And then Miss Jackson has what she thinks is supposed to be the way she's supposed to act as a woman. But she's also being more aggressive, which most people would associate with the man. And if you watch the show, if you watch the show itself, you'll see that she kind of not only initiates the sexual contact, but she really pushes it. Miss Jackson does. And so we get to this part at the end where Nate asks the audience if what he did was right or wrong. And some of the audience, most of the audience seems to say, no, it wasn't wrong. And then some of the audience says, yes. And I guess where you land on that really does depend on how you interpret the situation. And with everything that's going on, I think, like I said, that that's an important conversation to have. And I do think that it does do a very good job of letting you understand the confusion that some people go through. And when I see things like this, even if it has to be filed under comedy because there isn't a better category for it, then I think it's a benefit because it gets people to watch. And it definitely did, like I said, catch my attention. It made me watch. I would tell you, even if you feel like cringing at the beginning or you are cringing at the beginning, just force yourself to watch it and let me know what you think about it. I Because... In the end, I would say that after I watched the second time, I got genuine laughs, or I should say she produced genuine laughs from me. So it did serve that purpose of doing well as a comedy. And then it takes this sharp turn and gets very serious. And then by the end, they have this ridiculous conversation where Nate outright apologizes to Miss Jackson for raping her and then she's like actually I raped you and then he's like no I raped you and they get in this ridiculous back and forth about who raped who and overall for me it gets a good review I saw somebody on YouTube in the thread for the advertisement for Nate that said it was the best comedy of 2020 and that I felt like slow down it's not all that but it definitely is worth watching I would say out of five stars just because of the the way that it actually makes you think it does deserve the full five stars maybe four and a half if I'm being really hard on it but in my opinion it does exactly what art is supposed to do and in some cases what I try to do with my stand-up I usually try to add more punchlines but I'm not doing one-man show style so that for me, gives it a lot more allowances than a traditional stand-up set. But it's still definitely worth the watch, in my opinion. And I'm sorry if I seem a little disjointed in the way that I'm trying to talk about it, but I just want to really convey that it really does mind-fuck you in a way, but at the same time, sometimes you need to be mind-fucked. Sometimes we need to be pushed to think about things in a way that we wouldn't usually think about them. And sometimes if these things are going to be at the forefront of what people are talking about in society, which a lot of people have been talking about this type of stuff with the Me Too movement and some of the different movements that have come about, that these conversations do need to be had on some level. And if it takes something like a comedy that maybe makes you cringe a little bit, to force that conversation to happen or force you to even think about that, maybe it can be helpful to the overall of the entire conversation and let us think about things in a way that we otherwise might not ever think about them. So I know I'm going to disappoint some of the people that were like, oh, I'm sure you're going to hate it too, but I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it at all. I thought it was really good. Is it a traditional comedy? I've already been over that. No, it's definitely not. But is it worth your time? 100% I would say it's worth your time. Especially if you're still out there and dating. Male, female, gay, straight, trans, 
non-binary. I think it's important for everybody that's out there and dating, like I said, to watch it. Even if you're not out there and dating, it's just good to think about things in a different way sometimes. So that's my review on Nate. I know some people are going to have problems, like I said, with the story that I told about my personal situation with that guy. And I know that maybe I, well, I've had people try to, when, when I've, Whenever I've told anybody the story, I've had people try to convince me that I was supposed to feel victimized about that, but I really didn't. For me, I felt like, I remember after that happening, one of the things I thought was I need to take better care of myself and watch how much it is I'm drinking and what it is I'm doing because I shouldn't lose control like that because you never know what the other person is going to do or you never know what you're going to do when you're in a state that doesn't let you have any control over what it is that's happening around you. And I would like to say that you can trust everybody in the world and that nobody would ever take advantage of you. And I would like to think that I wasn't taken advantage of that night. But I can't say that you won't get taken advantage of. And I can't say 100% that I didn't get taken advantage of. This review is probably as confusing as the special and that's why i think it's important for you to watch it and that's why i also thought it was important for me to do a review about it please 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 if you get a chance do watch it and comment below and let me know what you think i don't mind if you don't agree with me it's not going to turn into me and you arguing because on this one i don't really think there's a definite right and a wrong and in a lot of cases when you're dealing with people There's not a right and a wrong. In some cases, there definitely are. But a lot of times when you're dealing with people, that's open to interpretation too. And so is this special, which makes it all the way around so perfect for me. So thank you to the people that asked me to review it. And also thank you to Tim Dillon for, through your words, making me want to watch it. And thank you guys for tuning into this review this has been ty rivera the absolute best lgbtq comedian in the world Mm -hmm.